It's good to see all of you. It's good to see some faces we haven't seen in quite a while. We pray that you may be blessed this morning as we study God's Word. As you can see in the title here, Be Not Troubled. In other words, those are the words that we read in Scripture when Jesus says, Let not your hearts be troubled. About what? About anything. Well, what about... You think God includes everything when he says, Be not troubled, let not your heart be troubled? He included everything. Did he know that a cross was coming? Did he know that the disciples' faith would be shaken? Absolutely. Nothing catches God by surprise. Jesus saw everything. He saw every crisis. He saw every hardship, every trial. He saw everything. And he says, you know what? Let not your heart be troubled. Now, we don't have to worry about anything. In fact, let me say it this way. We don't have anything to worry about if we know Jesus. Amen. If we are one with him, we have nothing to worry about the future. If we put our complete faith and trust in him, as we're told in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it says, trust in the Lord with how much of your heart? All thy heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In other words, don't trust in yourself. It's not your responsibility to fix the crisis. It's not your responsibility to save yourself. It's your responsibility to trust in God and be faithful to him. He'll work everything out. Amen. And if we're in the crisis, there's something God wants us to learn. He wants us to learn how to trust in him. He wants us to, us to learn how to depend on him. We need him to show us the way. We need him to guide our paths. He knows the way. Do you think he knows the way? Listen, he went to the grave, my brothers and sisters. You know, the biggest concern that a lot of us have is our mortality. He went to the grave. He knows the way. He's been there. And he came forth from that grave, and he says, I have the keys to death and to hell. He knows the way. He can get us through anything. Do you believe that? Amen. You better believe that. He can get us through anything in this life. But if we want him to get us through everything, if we want to be in a position where we don't have to uh, be fearful, we can, as we says, we can be in a position where our hearts don't have to be troubled. If we want to be there, we better make sure we fulfill what it says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 23. It says, he that loveth father more than me is not worthy of me. That's a tough thing to say. That's a tough truth. Especially if you have, especially if you have a mother like my mother. And I'm sure most of you can say the same thing. It's hard it's a hard truth, but it's true. Jesus says, if you love your mother and father more than me, you're not worthy of me. And he that loveth son and daughter more than me, that's a tough thing for parents. Especially if uh, they have a son like me. Amen? Well, not everyone's so sure. But he who loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Why is that, my brothers and sisters? Why is that? Because only Jesus paid the pain and the penalty for my sin. Only Jesus paid for that. Only Jesus can give you eternal life. We can't do it. Nobody else can do it. Even your mother, as lovely and as, as much as she loves you, she can't give you eternal life. And only Jesus can change your heart. Only Jesus can bring us to repentance. Only He can make us better husbands and fathers and sons and daughters. Only he can restore us into the image of his father. And that's why if we know Christ, if we are a member of his body, of his church, we don't have to be troubled. God has everything under control. Let me read to you, as we read in our scripture reading, the promise of John chapter 14. 
John chapter 14. If we are faithful to God, if we are faithful to His Word, if we live His Word, if we proclaim His Word, notice, we don't have nothing to worry about. It says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe ye believe in God. Hear the words which you can rely upon. Hear the words upon which you can lay every burden in your life. Do you have burdens in life? We have. Let me, let me put it this way. Do you have any troubles in your life? You have any heartaches and pain? We all do. Well, these are the words which we can lay at all. Every burden, every care, every stress, every concern that you have in this life. You can lay it all right here. Believe in God, it says. And believe also in me. This is talking about the Almighty. We're talking about trusting in He who is the preserver and the governor of the universe. He is sufficient to support and sustain you from the gutter, from the guttermost to the uttermost. He can deliver us from every trial, every distress. But Jesus says, but believe also in me, he says. Because it was God who sent his son that you may believe in him. It is God who sent his son, not just to teach us, not just to instruct us, but to redeem us, to protect us from evil, and to reward us for whatever hardship we may be going through in life. Believe also in me and my Father's house are many mansions. What does that mean? This world's not your home. Yes, this world is in crisis. But praise the Lord, we are not of this world. Yes, the world is getting worse. And listen, it would be depressing. It would, be, it would bring fear and apprehension if you're part of this world and if your destiny and future belong to this world. Yes, it would. And we're going to see some of those things. We're going to see what is taking place. We're going to look at some of the signs of the times. But yes, it says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. Our place is not here. Our future destiny is not here. Our eternal home is being prepared for us. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, where is he? He's with his father. He's in his father's house. There you may be also. What is Jesus? He wants to get us out of this world. He wants to take us to his father's house. There's a reason that we need this. Because the dark days are upon us. Yes, we're living in dark days today. And things are not going to get better for this world. They're not going to get better. Let me read to you from the writings of the Spirit of Prophecy here. It says, a great crisis awaits the people of God. Yes, you can read all about that in Revelation chapter 13. The greatest crisis, the mark of the beast crisis, is coming upon the whole world. It's a test for the people of God, but not just for the people of God. Notice, a crisis awaits the world. Read Revelation chapter 16. Read about the, the final plagues that will fall upon the inhabitants of the earth. Yes, it's a time of trouble for God's people, but it's not just going to be God's people. But here's the thing. The hope that we have is that we will not be alone in that crisis. That's the hope. When, you know, when Jesus says, when he said in John chapter uh, 14, let not your heart be troubled, is he also talking about the great crisis the mark of the beast crisis? Yes. If we put our faith, if we're obedient to him, if we are one with him, if we are in his hands, safe and secure in his hands, he will get us through that crisis. How do we know? Read Revelation chapter 15. 
And I saw those who received victory over the beast and over his image. They're standing in the sea of glass. They were able to overcome all those things. Amen. See, because Jesus overcame. Remember, he says, be of good cheer. In this world you have tribulations. But what? Be of good cheer. I've overcome. There's our victory. That victory is not just imputed. It's imparted. It becomes part of our life. His righteousness is not something that is just given to cover us. No, it becomes who we are. Amen. He gives us the grace and the power to live a new life of purity and freedom from all those besetting sins that will cause the world heartache and pain and misery. So yes, a crisis awaits the people of God. A crisis awaits the world. The most momentous struggle of the ages is just before us. Listen, we are now entering that time. The groundwork is being laid for this great crisis. Just wait. We're going to look at some news items. That's volume 5 of the Testimonies, page 711. Now notice, Christ's Object Lessons 178. In this time of prevailing iniquity... We may know that the last great crisis is at hand when the defiance of God's law is almost universal, when his people are oppressed and afflicted by their fellow men. What is God going to do? What's, oh, my brothers, he's not, not only is he going to take the reins of the work in his own hands and finish this work with power, but he will interpose once again. Just like he stepped into our dimension when he came, he will once again lead his people through the final crisis. We will not be alone if you put your faith and trust in Jesus. This world is not our home. Praise the Lord. Now notice what came out in Newsweek. April 14, 2023. The question, the headline says, Are American troops fighting in Ukraine? What do you think? Yes. We found out that they are. You, know, you, you remember, we sent the money, not for blankets and water. No, we sent military aid. We sent the funding. We sent the, the, the weapons. We sent uh, the coordinates where they can uh, attack the enemy. We've given them funding for war, weapons, tanks. We sent the tanks. We sent the ballistic missiles. Now, notice what this says. Notice, it, it doesn't say that you know, our president or our Congress came out and revealed this, this to us. It doesn't say they revealed this to us. It says, leaked U.S. intelligence documents. That's how, that's how we, the American public finds out about the truth. Leaked U.S. intelligence documents about the war in Ukraine and other national security issues were found online on a social me messaging platform. Can we say praise the Lord for social media? That's the, that's the poor man's uh, news. You know, we have no say in what happens in the big, you know, the mainstream media. But you know what? The American citizens have a voice on these alternative platforms. And somehow, some way, nobody knows. Well, they, they found out how it all happened. But the message got through. It says, one of the documents show that U.S. is among a number of nations with military special forces deployed in Ukraine. You know, you know what that means? We have boots on the ground, my brothers and sisters. We have boots. We found this out because the president came and, and had a, an open conversation with the American people. No, that's not how we found out. Leaked documents. So the U.S. and other nations are actively engage in the war of Ukraine. It's not just money. It's not just weapons. It's boots on the ground. My brothers and sisters, when, when are these wonderful politicians that we have, when are they going to be honest with the American people and just say what's happening over there? When, when are they going to do that? The government won't tell us anything, but they want us to pay for everything. Can you imagine that? What kind of relationship... My brothers, this world is not our home. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for that. You know, so it says we have special forces over there. 
My brothers, we need special forces here. We need special forces protecting our border. We need special forces in the major cities to stop all the violent crimes. Have you seen what's happening in Chicago? Have any of you seen? Well, just in case, I showed some, I got some images of what's happening in our major cities of this world. And they're not doing anything to stop it. My brothers, we need forces here to, to maintain the peace, to stop the crime, to stop the mayhem, to stop the school shootings. We need the help here. If this is true, which there's no reason to believe, though they're prosecuting the person who leaked the information, so if it wasn't true, they wouldn't prosecute it. But if this is true, my brothers and sisters, we are at war with Russia. And don't think for a second Russia didn't know about this. They probably knew about this long before this leaked here. Why can't we see leaked documents about peace efforts? Huh? Why can't we see those kind of leaked documents about the efforts of peace? Because there are no efforts of peace. We have warmongers in charge of this nation, in, a, in charge of, it says here, it wasn't just uh, U.S. U.S. is among a number of nations. We have warmongers that are leading this nation, our nations of this earth. Of course, we're not going to try to explain why, but, you know, there's just no money in peace. There's no money in peace. But there's untold wealth for a few people when we continue in this kind of life. There's a reason why this world's not our home. Praise the Lord. You know, if, if this world was our home, then we, then we wouldn't be able to take comfort in the words where Jesus tells us, don't worry. You know, be not afraid. Let not your hearts be troubled. If this was our home, we would be in trouble. This world is in trouble. So, look, let me show you something else. Let me give you some more encouragement. Some more encouragement that this world's not our home. Listen to this. You, you want to fill out a job application online? Now you want to fill a job application you have to go online. In fact, if you go to a lot of the restaurants and a lot of the stores, they say, we're hiring, go online. If you go online, it's not the image on the left. That's not the image you have to fill out on the left. Not the left. It's the one on the right, where it says your preferred gender. It's the one on the right you got to fill out. For the first, I don't know, how long have, how long have we been a nation? How many years? About 250 years, more or less. More or less. For the first 250 years, you would just check either male or female. That's how it was for the first 250 years. Just check one or the other. Today, this is what you have to fill out. You have to select from there. You, you want a job today? You have to go to this. And you have to choose you have to choose this. Now listen. I shouldn't have to have a dictionary to help me understand what my identity is. You need a dictionary to understand what all those terms mean. I don't know what they mean. And interesting, interesting enough, if you look at this list, this list of preferred gender identities, Mine's not there. Mine's not there. All the choices, not one of them has what we see on the left-hand side, just male and female. Not one of them is there. What are we, what are we doing, my brother? What, what is our world coming to? There's a reason why. Don't let your heart be troubled. This world's not our home. This world is not our home. It is amazing. Now, I thought, I thought I understood some terms. I thought I knew some of the terms. But brothers, I don't understand pan, pan, is that the frying pan? I don't know what it means. 
that mean I, I love a frying pan? I'm going to kiss the, the frying pan? Pan gender? Then we have, listen, trans female, trans male, trans man. I thought the male was a man. Oh, no, you don't understand. I don't understand. They're right. Trans female, trans man, trans male, trans woman, then transgender male and transgender man. What's the difference? Oh, there's a difference. I don't know what they are. But this is, the, this is where our world is going. This is where our world is headed for. Oh, my brothers and sisters, all, all identities are present except male and female. Oh, Andy, you don't understand because you're a cisgender male. That's what you are. Or a cisgender man, which is, I don't know what, what these things represent. Oh, my brothers, it, it is amazing. Listen, if you have to fill this out in your job application, run away from that job. Just run away. Because if this is what the application shows, you don't want to know what their policies show. You don't want to know the policies. Run away from that. Run away from this culture. There's a reason why Jesus is going to take us out of this world. Praise the Lord for that. Listen, let me give you some more encouragement why this world's not our home. Don't get attached to this earth. Listen to this. Here's the gender spectrum from a biblical perspective. You saw all the categories, right? You saw all the categories here. You see them all. And there's more than that. You see, you see how you can still uh, scroll down? There's still more. It's, there's still more. But from a biblical perspective, this is the gender spectrum. There are only three categories. Male, female, and you see what the middle ones are. Every other color is that title that you see there. Mental illness. That's what it is. Mental illness. And I'll tell you why. Everything else is just an illusion. It's make-believe. It's a fairy tale. I heard somebody on the news uh, explaining, explaining it this way. Uh, he said that if he was to go, this is a man. He looks like a man, has a beard, has all the features. He says, if I was to go to the emergency room, I heard this in the news this past week. He says, if I was to go to the emergency room and I tell the doctors and the nurses, you know, who have special training, they get special training in biology. If I was to go to the emergency room, say, I, I have a stomach problem. I'm a, I feel like I'm about to lose my baby. Can you please help me? What would they do? Would they start treating him? Come on, my brothers and sisters. If a man walks into a hospital saying, I, I'm going to lose my baby. Can you please help me? What are they going to do? They're going to throw him out of there. They say, you're not having a baby. But we're coming to a point in this nation where they can't say that to them. They cannot say that. I don't know what tests they're going to run. But if they don't treat him, if they don't do something to say whatever he claims he has, he can sue them for not acknowledging his identity. Brothers and sisters, that's the world we're living in. You say, no, Andy, I think maybe you're pushing it too far. Am I really pushing it? Notice this. This came out April 20. April 20, 2023. This is a member of Congress. And this representative praises uh, Buttigieg. He's our transportation secretary. His plan to solve gender inequality. How are they going to solve gender inequality? You know how they're going to do it? By promoting female crash test dummies. That's how they're going to solve inequality. Don't you feel better now that we have, we have some leaders in Washington, D.C., who are focused on the important issues that are facing this nation? Aren't you glad? And you can read about it. Basically, it says that uh, Delaro used her time to praise the Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg's initiative to rectify the gender inequality. How are they going to rectify? But you know the crash dummies. You've seen the cars where they smash the cars on purpose and they have dummies in there. Well, they, they need to have females dummies. Is Delaro a, a dummy? <laughs> That's 
My brothers, let, let, me, let me show you how our world is, is collapsing. Let me show you how it's collapsing. If it's true, if it's true that we need to have a female crash dummy to represent females because maybe their bone structure is different. Is the bone structure a little different? Yes. If it's true that we need a female crash dummy because there's a weight difference between male and females, are there weight differences? How about muscle mass? Is there a difference in muscle mass? In other words, if there are biological differences between male and female, then they're admitting that there are differences between male and female. And this whole notion destroys the popular transgender idea that there are no biological differences between male and female. And therefore, uh, transgender men or transgender women who are biological males, they should be able to compete with women in sports because there are no differences. But here they're saying there are differences. My brothers, you can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. You can't legislate and pass policies that say we have to have a, a recognize a category of female crash dummies because they're different biologically, and then pass policies and laws that say uh, men can compete in women's sports because there are no differences. You can't have it both ways. You see the contradiction? It is, it is a mental illness. And this is the best our political leaders can come up with. This is the best policies they can, they're presenting today as we speak. Their priorities. Where are their priorities? Are they trying to help us with the inflation? No, my brothers and sisters. Are they trying to help uh, secure our borders? No, they don't care about that. Are they, how about the U.S. debt? Is the U.S. debt still climbing? Are they doing anything to, to help us economically? Are they doing anything to stop the, the crimes? <coughs> You know, the, the, the looting of our stores in the cities, Walgreens and Walmart, gas stations, they ransack, hundreds ransack the stores. They take everything. They burn everything. And they're getting away with those things. There's no punishment. And yet, we're going to get female crash dummies. Does that make you feel better now? Aren't you glad to know that that we have uh, people who are looking out for our best interests. My brothers and sisters, our world is in trouble. Our world is in trouble. This is a local Walmart in Chicago. The shelves are empty. And there was a woman who, this week, you can see, the, woman, the video went viral. A woman went through the Walmart and she wanted to buy some food. There's nothing to buy. And if they're waiting for Walmart to come back, and restock those shelves, they're mistaken. They're moving out. Where are the people going to go get the food? And why, do th why are these things happening, my brothers and sisters? Why do we see this continual reports in our cities of crime sweeping through the land? Why do we keep hearing this again and again and again? Every couple, every other month, or it seems like every month now, we seem to be unable to do anything about what is happening. Crime is completely out of control. Our cities are being transformed into war zones. You talk about a war zone, these are war zones. We have them here. We need the special forces, not over there. We need them here. We need them here. And what happened? These were teens that were rioting. These are the young people. This is the future of our nation that are doing these things. And you know that they uh, took over. They call it the, the teen takeover, the takeover of our cities, attacking people, jumping on vehicles, smashing, stealing, uh, looting in the stores, 
Complete chaos, complete destruction. I'm going to show you what the politicians are saying. What basically, my brothers and sisters, what is happening is sin is being decriminalized. That's what's happening. In the name of peace, peace a protest. In the name of social justice, sin is being criminalized. Basic laws are not being enforced for the sake of not being labeled as a dozen titles that we're not even going to mention. Elected officials are refusing to do anything. I'm going to show you. They refuse. They're not going to do anything about this. And what else can you expect when this is, these are the youth with impunity, they can uh, behave this way. What do you expect is going to happen in the next generation if Jesus doesn't come? Listen to this. This came out April 20th. How long ago was that? What, two days ago? Illinois State Senator defends Chicago teens rioting and looting. It's a mass protest. Brothers and sisters. You can't run it. You can't have a society like this. You cannot have a home. You cannot have a business in this type of environment where you have those who are in charge of these communities saying, no, they're just, they're just, they're just protesting. That's all. There's no food in the store. People can't buy anything. No, they're just protesting. They're protesting systemic poverty. They just want their voice to be heard. They just need a platform to show how they have been kept down for so long. My brothers, they're legalizing and justifying criminal behavior. That's exactly what's happening in our world. Jesus says, but Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. This world is not your home. Christ is going to come. We're going to see before we close, Christ is going to come and put an end to all of this. But basic laws are not being enforced. Policies that promote and protect criminal behavior. Now listen, there's violence. There was violence. People died. People were attacked. People were robbed. Tourists were attacked and robbed. And we're seeing policies and politicians that are protecting behavior that threatens the life of lives, property, freedom, and liberty. Can't even walk down the street without being attacked. Cars, cars driving by being attacked. Listen to this one. This is April 17. Chicago's mayor-elect warns against demonizing these rampaging teens after unrest. Don't demonize these young people. My brothers, listen, if they're going to act like demons, what do, you, what do you expect? And notice, it says Chicago mayor-elect, this came out in the New York Post, responded this weekend's violence, violent teen takeover in the Windy City's downtown area by urging the public not to demonize the hordes of rampaging young people who, what? They set cars on fire, they clash with the cops, and damage private property. Don't demonize them. Then, then what do you do? You praise them? We exalt it? He says, but I'm not condoning, I don't condone destructive activity that we saw. He goes on, however, it's not constructive to demonize youth who have otherwise been starved of opportunity. They haven't had an opportunity. Brother, they're destroying those opportunities. They're destroying, yes, my sister. Brother Andy, in, um, in Jerusalem itself, if any of this kind of trash starts, these kids, if there's any you know, social injustice, um, In, in what community? In, in, in Israel today. In Israel, yes. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, you know, the, the hands 
the hands of law enforcement, they're tied. Their hands are tied. Because they're not going to have the, the policy makers and the prosecutors and the court systems are not going to support and are not going to support them. So their hands are tied, unfortunately, in this nation because of woke policies that are designed to protect criminals. They're designed to protect criminal activity and to punish those who believe in principles of what our nation was founded on, a right to life, liberty, and property. Our brothers, we, we're, we're in the days of Noah. Remember in the days of Noah, there was violence in the land? We were there. We are there. Look at what volume 9 of the testimonies tells us. Page 11. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of the grace of God. The calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of society. What unsettled state of society? We're seeing it. We're seeing it. The alarms of war. We're boots on the ground in Ukraine. We're at war. It, it, it started. You know, and I believe it's been going on for 18 months. I believe that. I don't believe this just happened last week. The documents were leaked last week. You know, it makes you wonder, what else are they keeping from us? Come on, my brothers and sisters. What else are these wonderful leaders keeping us, keeping, keeping us in the dark? She says, they forecast events of greatest magnitude. Here, listen, the agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. You see, when the mark of the beast comes, don't think that society is going to be in perfect peace and harmony. No, my brothers. No. It's all being torn apart. Every principle that God gave us in his word so that we can be uh, uh, prosperous and have peace and that we may... Uh, Enjoy the fruit of our labors, that he, all the blessings, they're all being destroyed. Everything. Great changes are soon to take place in our world. And the final movements will be rapid ones. Listen, how, when did you ever imagine that we would justify this kind of lawlessness, sin, iniquity, and say, no, 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 it's a protest. Kind of like what the Protestants did, you know, in the, during the Reformation. They're doing the same work. They're doing the work of God, my brothers and sisters. We close with this. We close with this. It says in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, and the goats to his left. Brothers, in spite of what we're seeing in this world, there's something else that's looming in the horizon. Something that the world doesn't see, but it is our mission to point people to. And what's looming in the horizon is the greatest event of all times. And that's described as the return in majesty and power described there. He's coming in majesty and power in great glory that no human language can describe. I know it's, we can read it, but human language fails to describe. And he's coming in power to put an end to sin and rebellion. The angels told the disciples, remember when, when Jesus lifted up his hands to bless them, he began to be caught up in the air. And disciples were watching him, and the cloud took him. And the, the angel said, listen, that Jesus, that Jesus who you just saw, this same Jesus who you saw taken from him, will come again in like manner. This same Jesus. Which Jesus? The King of kings and Lord of lords will be the same Jesus who wants to be with us today. 
The same Jesus who healed infirmities, the same Jesus who said, let not your heart be troubled. The same Jesus who paid the price on the cross, the one who bore all my sins, the same Jesus who who lives to intercede forevermore, who was in the tomb, who rose from the grave. That's the same Jesus who's coming in power and glory. And he's coming for a church. He's coming for a people. He's coming for those in whom he has this special relationship with today. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's that same Jesus that's coming. That's why we don't have anything to worry about the future. We know how it's all going to end. We know the end of the story. Let not your heart be troubled. Listen, if you know Christ, we don't have nothing to worry about, nothing to fear. We, our duty is just to stay faithful to him, proclaim his message, live his message, and allow him to use us as a vessel of honor to carry that to the rest of the world. And to, in, in the middle of all this mess, to point to people, to our coming Savior. That is our mission. That is our duty. And if we're faithful to that task, he will get us through anything. Anything this world can give to us. Let's bow our heads. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you for the promises that are in your word. Help us, Lord, to depend upon you. Help us to keep our eyes not just in what's happening in Bible prophecy, most importantly, in the kingdom that you're preparing. Help us not just to be citizens, but help us to invite others and bring them so that they too can be ready when you come in glory. We thank you for this congregation and all the evangelistic efforts that are being done. We pray that you may continue to advance your truth and your word in this world so that souls could be saved. We thank you once again. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen.